So you want to learn how to flint nap. That is great to hear and thank you for allowing me to help take you on this journey. So whether you want to make points and blades out of beautiful rocks, make your own stone knives and other primitive tools, or maybe even nap your own arrowheads to hunt big game with like we do here at Hunt Primitive. Whatever's inspired you to get into flint napping, we're going to jump right in, coming up. Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, and inspire. And on this channel, we do a lot of primitive build and or hunting videos, just like this one. So if you're new here, do please consider subscribing. But of course, today we're jumping right into basically the cliff notes, the basics of flint napping. Now, I do have some really long, intensive flint napping instructional videos, okay? And I'm going to drop the link down in the description to all that stuff. It's just right here on YouTube. It's totally free. Check those out if you want, like, the really detailed stuff. This is more or less like the cliff notes version, okay? We're going to get you started. We're going to show you the mechanics, show you the tools, and you'll be off and running. All right, we're going to get you started off on percussion napping, okay? So now I do have a whole nother video on flint napping rocks, okay? What to look for in rocks, what works. That's down in the description as well. So this way you at least know what to look for if you're going out looking for your own rocks, okay? So now there's a couple different tools to look at. If you're looking at traditional indigenous style tools, this is what you're looking at right here. Simple hammer stones and stuff like antler billets like this. Some antler billets can be longer. I like these ones for freehand stuff. I have a whole video obviously on napping with this stuff too. The new modern tools are what we call boppers, copper boppers, and they're copper tools. They're weighted in the heads, wood handle, and you know this stuff's a little bit easier to use. It does drive flakes a little bit further. It's not contextually accurate of course as the hammerstone and the antler billet is, but this is a little bit easier. And for folks that really want to get started with a little easier journey, I do recommend the modern tools. If you want to graduate into the tougher tools later, then I highly encourage it. Uh, but if you just want to get started quick, a good set of copper tools uh, is the best way really to get started. So we're going to show you just a little bit of percussion on both. And what you do is it's you're removing flakes off of the bottom and then we'll talk about platforms in other videos where you find these protruding corners essentially that stick out and you're going to strike down on those so you're not hitting it like this from this direction and you're not grinding okay flint napping is breaking the rock Oops, get one little one there And that's how you remove flakes off of a large one. Now this is actually great because we can set this one aside and actually use it for an arrowhead later. And then we move on to the copper bopper and it works about the same way. So it's another little arrowhead piece. And what we're actually doing is we're moving these small pieces. There's probably get another little arrowhead piece there. We move these small pieces towards the center to start shaping this larger rock into whatever it is we're trying to make. And in this case, this would be a great piece to make a knife blade out of. And then of course, as you, if we're getting back to the abo tools or the indigenous tools, the antler is great for freehand flake removal. There you go, but they go flying off there pretty quick, so be sure that uh, you got a little bit of safety gear on. Them little sh flakes of uh, chert and flint come off there pretty darn quick. Okay, so now of course we're just jumping ahead, right? This is the Cliff Notes version. Now this is called indirect percussion. Now you don't necessarily need to know how to do this right away. This is a little bit more advanced, although I highly recommend getting started on it as early as possible because, man, it's a really effective method 
for intermediate flake removal between the percussion napping and the pressure flaking which we're going to show you in just a few minutes. But indirect is setting a bit on the piece of rock and striking it with a mallet and we lost part of the flake right there but you can see there's still the rest of it. Look how nice and thin and long that flake runs. Indirect percussion is a great great tool for final work on these. Now what we also have are the primitive versions of it as well which would be tipped with either something like moose antler, axis antler or even ivory and they work pretty much the same exact way now of course remember if you're looking for rocks or tools anything along those lines huntprimitive.com's got you set up with everything you need whether you get it from me or somebody else that doesn't matter just make sure you're putting the stuff in your hands getting out getting some flint napping done. So we got the modern tools, we've got the primitive tools, and we got lots of rock over at huntprimitive.com. And then finally to really finish a piece out, we use a deer antler tine as a pressure flaker. And what we're doing is we're grabbing along the edge to these little flakes and driving them off. So traditionally a deer antler was used or a small uh, piece of ivory stuck into a stick. But of course with the modern tools we can switch over and use a copper tipped pressure flaker. Okay, well that should get you off and running. That's the basics. That's the basic mechanics of flint napping and now it gives you some choices. Do you want to go with more modern tools or do you want to go with the traditional indigenous style tools? and what is it you're trying to make. Now of course remember if you want to watch me go through the full instruction videos or even just sit and watch me make stuff even make it and then take it out and go hunt with it check down in the description for those links but then also on huntprimitive.com now that's of course that's where you can get the tools and rock and that kind of stuff too if you don't want to make it yourself or collect it yourself you can get the tools there but also on the website down at the bottom of the menu especially if you're using a phone is a tab on the menu called the Hunt Primitive How-To Directory. And what that is, is we section spots off for bow making, arrow making, flint napping, and you can go in there and select through the menu what it is you want to learn more about, and then scroll through the videos for things that may interest you on the how-tos on how to build this stuff for yourself. So you can check that out at HuntPrimitive.com. Well, thanks for following along today, and hopefully you learned some stuff about flint napping, and we got you off and running on your own flint napping adventures. Uh, of course, remember to check the links down in the description for those other videos that really get you started. Like we're really going to dive deep into how to actually remove these flakes really, really well, and how to become a much better flint napper faster. But for now, we'll catch you on the next adventure.